Hello there, hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. Um, sorry, that's not my intro, is it? I'm John, I'm a guitarist, obviously. Um, there's lots of stuff on the channel you hopefully might find interesting or useful. Um, if you want to like and subscribe, that'll be cool. So, in this video, I wanted to tell you how to start using your HX Stomp as a recording interface, essentially. Um, I guess a lot of us are stuck inside at the moment and I think some of us have always wanted to record something but haven't until this stage and I've been asked on a couple of occasions how I personally go about recording um, and how I use Helix or HX Stomp. Personally I don't always use them as the interface, I have an external audio interface um, but uh, I thought this would be an interesting and useful video hopefully for a few people anyway. So things that you'll need for this video. Things that you'll need in order to uh, record with your HX Stomp. You will need an HX Stomp or uh, I think most of these steps will be exactly the same for any other uh, modeler which is also an interface. So a Headrush Digboard, same kind of process. The Helix itself is the same kind of process. Um, etc. The Kemper doesn't have an interface built in so that's not going to work. Um, yeah, so you need your HX Stomp, you'll need one of these leads which is kind of like that old kind of printer style and a normal USB. So this goes between your laptop or computer and your Stomp or other audio interface. Um, you'll need some headphones, or you'll need uh, speakers like monitors, or you know, I use JBL LSR 305s in case you were wondering. Because basically, this becomes your sound card, so your laptop speakers or PC speakers um, should, in theory, no longer work once you're using this or whilst you're using this. Not this is an ad or anything, but I personally use loaded for bare audio cables. Um, so these go between any of my in, uh, devices and my interface over there. Uh, they're made by a guy called John, uh, which is a good thing, and he's a really nice family man. Um, so I have stereo TRS jacks to XLR, and this is my loom that sits between whatever sits between whatever model that I'm using and the audio interface. Just FYI. Uh, you also need a guitar lead and you'll need your laptop. So basically step one is about getting connected. Now the obvious thing to do would be to first plug things into the laptop but I don't think generally that's the best way to do things. So what I would recommend is you go onto Line 6 website and you read there how to use the HX Stomp uh, as an interface and you stop watching this video and then I don't need to continue. Uh, wait, no, that's, that's not the advice. Have this all plugged in, ready to go, as in powered up, um, but don't plug in this interface, uh, cable. Don't plug in this cable yet. So what you're gonna wanna do is go onto the Line 6 website and go onto software, downloads. I think that's downloads, software. You'll have to set up uh, an account on the Line 6 website, which is free, but you, you set up this account basically to be able to download their software. So if you go to line6.com forward slash software, and then you've got this free software downloads thing, and go into Line 6 HX Stomp in the hardware section, software, you're gonna want to find drivers. Um, so these are the things that tell your computer what this actually is once you eventually plug it in. And whilst you're there you might as well download HX Edit and Line 6 Updata just because those will keep your device up to date. And I did have one problem once where I wouldn't recognise the HX Stomp because the drivers in the HX Edit and whatever, it wasn't all matched up so that wasn't working for a time. Um, 
So install the drivers and follow all that. Then the next thing you're going to need is a digital audio workstation. Um, so I'm just going to quickly explain what these things are. So the audio interface essentially is what sits between your guitar, the device that is making sound, and uh, your computer. And it's what turns those audio signals into digital. It's called digital audio conversion or vice versa. In the case of the HX Stomp, it has an audio interface built in, which is what this is, a little USB thing we can gain access to it with, which is why you're watching this video, so I don't need to tell you that. Then a digital audio workstation is what we use to actually record sound. So as we speak, I'm using Reaper. I believe Line 6, some of their stuff comes um, bundled with Cubase. I think Traction have just put out a new digi uh, dig digital audio workstation. Um, there's free ones, there's really simple ones like Audacity, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend because I think it's a little bit too simplistic for some of the... I personally don't use it. Um, I've used Cubase in the past. Uh, I now use Reaper, um, it does everything I, I need. Uh, Mac people, I know Logic is popular. Um, the thing that I don't hear so much of anymore is kind of like supremacy of digital audio workstation. Like I don't hear people really saying like Pro Tools is the only thing you should use anymore. Like it used to be the case that people would say that, but I'm not sure that's how things are anymore, um, which I think is a good thing. That each um, digital audio workstation will be able to achieve roughly the same things um, that's what they're for and chances are you could get on fine with any of them I just personally use Reaper um, so install whatever digital audio workstation you're going to have like I said there's a free one from Traction there's Cubase which comes bundled with uh, some of the Line 6 stuff so it might be with your HX Storm I'm not sure Logic on your Apple GarageBand even uh, I think lots of people have done useful stuff with that uh, Fruity Loops, I think, is uh, another one. I'm probably missing loads, uh, but I'm just saying I use Reaper. But download that. Um, download your drivers. Then plug in your HX Stomp. Um, now, the way to test whether these things have worked is to plug in your HX Stomp. Maybe I'll just do this with you. And it should basically ping up and recognize it. Now I don't know if this is going to be the same if you're a Mac person. I come from the evil PC side, so... So, I've just had to do a quick run around the house. These things are like gold dust and you should protect these with your life. Um, but yeah, to plug into your HX Stomp you'll need uh, whatever they're called. This goes into your headphones. And if you've installed stuff properly, uh, so you install your drivers, install your digital audio workstation. You don't need that open for now, but then turn on your HX Stomp. And basically now if you were to go onto like YouTube or anything, you should be getting sound through your headphones. So perhaps you go onto YouTube and you watch some guitarist video, maybe someone like John Cordy. Cool, so that's that's worked for me. If that hasn't worked for you, that's where you need to get to first. Um, so I think if you're in Windows, there's like this little audio preferences uh, section, you know, where you've got that little speaker icon in the bottom. You could right click that and then go open sound settings, I think. And basically you want to be changing it from the default Windows device to being your output device as being the the Line 6 HX Stomp. Similarly, you want your input device to be the Line 6 HX Stomp. So hopefully you followed this far. The next step is to open up your digital audio workstation. So, as I say, I use Reaper. I'm going to take these off because I look like a, a dodgy DJ. So, I've clicked Reaper now and I'm opening that. This is a, a mug from a guy called Tim who runs a company called Studio Wear and he sent me a mug. If you're using Reaper 
if you go into uh, options, at the bottom of the options is a thing called preferences. So in other um, digital audio workstations, this is going to be a different set of steps potentially or a different um, label. Um, but you're essentially looking for audio preferences and you're looking for where you set up your audio device settings and the audio system that I want you to change it to will be ASIO, A-S-I-O certainly if you're on PC, I'm not sure if you're on a Mac and then you want to change your ASIO driver A-S-I-O to be the Line 6 ASIO HX Stomp driver that you installed at the first stage when we went onto the Line 6 website. Does that make sense? And then there's a process of enabling and just checking those inputs. Um, so make sure that's all good. Believe that's what you'll have to do. Now back in the day this used to be a lot more complicated. I've been recording at home since I was 16, maybe 15. I used to play with a guy called Sam Hester who lived in a converted chapel and we went through all of this kind of fun stuff together of discovering that when you use an interface you uh, get things like latency which we didn't know about because things were quite different back then um, then we've got the next sort of uh, he had an M audio USB something and I had an M audio audio file and uh, gradually we got to know what's going on with these interfaces and stuff but there used to be quite a lot of playing around trying to get it to recognise the, the device and making sure we got the right drivers. Still the same process now, but it's a little bit more streamlined, I think. So go into your audio device settings in your digital audio workstation and find the ASIO HX Stomp driver. And what is, that is basically doing is then saying that it's going to take the HX Stomp audio inputs and that's what it'll be converting and it's also going to send audio back out through the uh, HX stomp uh, into the headphones that you got. Um, the press OK for that then same kind of thing for each audio uh, digital audio workstation you go track generally or insert insert a new track and you should get uh, a line come up which is essentially your recording space and if you click record or arm you can then also change the input so for me I use inputs 1 and 2 of the HX stomp and then essentially you're ready to record so I would change the input actually to stereo 1 and 2 and that's how you record or set up for recording basically volume knob on the HX Stomp is no longer an issue, I think that just now controls the volume of your headphones or the speakers that you've got plugged into the HX Stomp. Um, so everything comes out of the HX Stomp at Unity Gain, I think. Uh, could be wrong. Well, so this is your stage to basically start exploring the digital audio workstation. I can't hold your hand through all of that. Um, what I personally do is set up a click track and start recording. Um, to that, I think you might have seen some of my looping videos and stuff, that's my process, basically I'll record uh, one long stream of audio and then chop it together afterwards. Um, so the click track is called, well, different things but in Reaper, if you uh, get your transport bar open, there's a, a BPM tap tempo and that sort of stuff. And you can insert backing tracks and stuff if you want, if you go to like insert or import media, insert and import are generally the terms they use for this stuff. Uh, I personally have backing tracks online if you want to try some of my stuff. Uh, on Patreon, uh, I upload any backing tracks that are requested and I've got a few on Bandcamp as well if you're into that sort of thing. But yeah, if you insert the media file um, and then record with that media file playing, basically it will import the media file into the digital audio workstation, you can move that down to a different track and then record yours and then blend the two. Um, you're going to maybe want to think about things like drums and keys and vocals and all this other stuff 
Um, personally, I use native instruments for almost everything. Um, and then you're going to also potentially want to delve into the world of plugins um, when it comes to mixing things like compression, EQ, and all that side of stuff, I guess, is important. Um, for me personally, when I'm making these videos uh, with the HX Stomp Helix and everything, because I'm trying to demo the actual tones, for me, I have to try and be honest about what this stuff actually sounds like. Um, in a studio environment, uh, it'd be absolutely fair game to EQ and compress the guitar parts and all that sort of stuff, but I just use uh, mastering plugin on the kind of master track itself, not on the guitars. Sorry, not on the individual guitars and like not EQing and compressing them and stuff individually. So yeah, you're going to think about maybe uh, MIDI program drums or drum loops. Um, so there are places that sell kind of ready-made drum loops. Um, or you could go, there's a drummer I know locally called Miguel Andrews. He puts up loops of his playing that people can use and practice to and record with. Um, I think that's quite a good way to, to do stuff. Um, working with the sounds of a live drummer are quite different to try and program in your own um, MIDI beats. Uh, if you've never done that before, there's a whole process behind it. So you could look into, yeah, like I say, uh, there's a drummer called Mix Drummer, I think it would be. Um, but he's got kind of uh, packages of loops and stuff and even free folders of loops and stuff. And he's a great drummer, obviously. Uh, terrible person though, awful, awful guy. So yeah, those are some things to think about. Um, one other neat little trick, if you're playing electric guitar, um, you might not have a bass. Things do still sound good. So if you record clean with no delay and reverb, uh, a bass line, but on a guitar, and then drop it down an octave, that does sound still pretty good in a mix, I think. And uh, so that's something you could try. Um, so I think that should have taken you from start to finish. So you should now be at the stage where you've got a digital audio workstation open. It might be Reaper, it might be Traction, it might be uh, whatever. Um, so now it's up to you to kind of explore that space and find how that stuff works. Um, as I say, I've been doing this for since I was 16, so nearly half of my life now. And the more you do it, the more you learn. Um, I think in the first kind of two years of recording, I'd recorded sort of five, six hours of actual songs. Um, you know, if you st played them all after, one after the other. So uh, the more you put into this recording stuff, the more you get out of it essentially. Um, but this is just the first steps to getting recorded. Um, so hopefully this has been helpful. Um, if it has, if you could do the old like and subscribe thing, that'd be super helpful to me. Uh, or if you want to share this video around to people who are in a similar position where you've got some time at home and you want to start recording, um, these same processes work with the Yamaha THR. So that's actually got an interface built in. Um, so the process would be the same for you. Uh, download the drivers for the Yamaha uh, from the Yamaha website. Uh, install them. Download a digital audio workstation. Uh, plug in the THR and with the USB. Then go into your audio preferences in the digital audio workstation and select um, what are they called? Let me just check. Options, preferences, Yamaha Steinberg USB ASIO. So Yamaha Steinberg USB ASIO, you'll install that. So just while I'm talking about this actually, I've got ASIO drivers for the Helix on this laptop, for the HX Stomp, for the Spider 5, uh, for the Headrush gig board, um, for a Behringer XR18, so that's like a, a a bigger digital desk which has like 18 inputs and for the Yamaha THR so uh, that's what your driver does it basically enables your computer to talk to each audio device that you've got um, so hopefully this has been helpful as I say and uh, I'll catch you on the channel soon 
If there are any questions about any of this stuff, use the comments. I do read them, so please be kind. Um, and we can try and get you recording, essentially. Um, I'm probably going to do some live streams and stuff on this, where I could possibly do some screen shares if that's of interest. Again, comment if that works for you or you want that to happen. Um, but yeah, hopefully this has helped slightly. Thank you.